just have um, you know, the great um, praise and what she's done. Um, just that and the other things that we did as well. Looking at what's taking place and stuff like that. Even uh, such as we're not looking at the COVID 19. Uh, yeah, we really reached out to the patients and make sure they need to be in the house. It says a lot. Um, yeah, and then we have a lot of. I will agree with you 100% on that. She's an asset to our seniors. Cool. Do you have anything? Um, at this point, point in time, I'll uh, let her have a motion to CEO director contract. In that case, I will make a motion to approve the contract for Director of Senior Services. Close the contract for July 1, 2020 through July 2023. I will second motion. favor? Aye. Aye. That's the case. Aye. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good work, Chloe. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I have COVID, but this So long as I both the contracts. <laughs> Chief Mitchell, notifying you of the town's intention not to renew his contract as of July 1st, 2021. I will second Jenna Bogey. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Two ayes. Thank you. Thank you. 
Can you give me a couple of seconds to please notify Jay that to rejoin the meeting? Hey, Jay, how are you doing? Can anybody hear me? Yes, Jay. Oh, I didn't know, so I was just checking. All right, move forward to our next uh, agenda topic. Uh, we have assistant town administrator contracts and stuff. And again, uh, this is a contract for the period July 1, 2020 through June 30th, 2023. This is for the town administrator assistant. Uh, this is for Kathy Leonard, who will, is now gonna be referred as the assistant. Um, the only thing that was changed on here was the salaries and the amount of longevity pay be paid out on an annual basis. The where the amount of the South first year salary is sixty thousand. We've had a long discussion over the last <coughs> about getting help for the town administrator. Many town administrators have an assistant now to help share the workload and to be available if I am indisposed for any reason. Um, when I go on vacation, Kathy takes over for me. She makes a lot of decisions for me and she pretty much knows uh, my thought processes. I have no idea. Uh, so the, basically what I'm looking at doing is having her be my assistant so that when I am out of the office, we have a chain of command where she will be in charge. And if she can't answer it, she would call me or the chair of the select board to assist her in making decisions. Any any questions? No questions, but I would like to say thank you, Kathy. Thank you for everything you do for me. Yeah, I just want to say before, again, hopefully people can hear me. Um, just regards to Kathy and uh, the work she does here. Um, I think it's a lot of times I think it's above beyond. Uh, I said this before, I come out of here on work at um, 20 after 7, the vehicle's here. I come back to you at 4.30 and the vehicle's on the parking lot. Uh, so it's just the market. That says a lot for the dedication and the work. Um, there's no doubt that we have to put in definitely more time for hours and stuff, and someone's getting 
as a uh, resident of Reading, I really appreciate your uh, invitation to the past. I want to entertain a motion to approve the assistant town administrator. I will make a motion to approve the town administrator contract between the town of and the county members for the period July 1, 2020 through June 30, 2023. I will second Jen for this. Yeah. yeah, but you're, I can hardly hear you. It's like an echo and you're all broken up. Now I can hear you. Yep. Okay. So the chair made a motion to approve the assistant town administrator contract. I second the motion. I have opened up the discussion. Did you have anything? No, I've already read it. Well, this time, I'll make it. Hi. 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 Jay, hi. Yep, I said aye. Okay, okay thank, thank you. I didn't move it. I didn't go anywhere. Hmm. All right. Um. Well, it's 25 after you. If you want, we can probably do accept departmental reports. So we can do that. Do we have any questions or concerns for the department of reports? Jay? Is the town administrator going to talk about Dufresne's Park and the problems over there? I don't see a thing for correspondence on the agenda. That's why I asked. A little bit later, Jay. Okay, I didn't know because there's nothing for correspondent. That's why I asked. Any any concerns to, uh, to the departmental report? Is that a no 
I don't have a problem with the department's reports if you're waiting for me. I'd say Glenn's coming in garboed and echo. Yeah, it's your problem. I think if you ask the other people, they hear a high squeal noise too. Look at Al, look at Nod in his head. And look Here at Al. Second, the department reports. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. You ready for the, you wanna do the warrants? Sure. Okay, we have three warrants for approval. First one is warrant number 71 in the amount of $164,992.46, dated May 22nd. That is a bill paying warrant. We have warrant number 72 in the amount of $395,772.32, dated May 29th, which is the payroll warrant. And then we have warrant number 73 in the amount of 498,772. 0.67 dated May 29th, which is the maintenance warrant that goes along with the payroll warrant. And that is for the payment of our uh, union dues, taxes, and monthly health insurance and retirement contributions. I will make the motion to approve fiscal year 2020 with number 71, 72, and 72. Is there a second? I'll second the warrants one, two, and three. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm turning it up, so hopefully you'll be able to hear it. Glenn, okay, from over there. Uh, we have a, a application. We have a Town of Grandy legal notice. Um, notice is hereby given under Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Laws. Granby Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, June 1, 2020, at 4.30 p.m. at 10-B West State Street Senior Center Building. One, to consider the transfer of a retail section 15 package all-alcoholic all beverage premises license from Granby Liquor Store, Inc. to A.N. Liquors, Inc and two, to consider Hitesh Kumar Patel as manager. Premises described as follows. Business with full basement, front entrance, and side rear entrance located at 60 West State Street, Granby, Mass. Anyone interested and wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated. This meeting may have to be held in a remote session due to COVID-19 guidelines. Please go to https www.cranby-ma.gov, select board, 
agenda, select board dash 19. 48 hours before the meeting, to check on the status of the meeting in case you need a phone number and proper to join this meeting. Signed, J.J. Joyce, Lynn N. Sexton, Jennifer A. Silva, Randy Select Board, Licensing Commission. As this is a hearing, you would open it up the hearing to any proponents, any opponents, close the hearing, deliberate and make a decision whether to approve the transfer of a license and to approve uh, Mr. Bell as the manager for the package store. Well, since uh, we're going to open up to as a public meeting at this time. Uh, any, any discussion from any of the public at this time? Is there any proponents out there who would like to comment on this proposed transfer of license? Uh, good evening. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Matt Ford. I'm the attorney for the applicant. Uh, if you'd like, I can just open with our presentation. Please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so before the board, this is the transfer of the all alcohol package store license for Granby Liquors. Uh, represent I and Liquors Inc., uh, which is comprised of three individuals. Uh, Vijay Patel, uh, Rajesh Patel, uh, as well as Hitesh Kumar Patel. Uh, Hitesh Kumar uh, would also be the manager on the license. Uh, all three individuals um, are well versed in the uh, liquor industry. Uh, they own other locations uh, with very solid track records. So certainly they understand the responsibilities uh, that come along with operating a license uh, within the town. Uh, it's been a very smooth transaction thus far with the seller. All of our financing is in order. Um, there is a pledge of the license as well, which would be going to Rockland Trust, uh, who's financing the transaction. Um, so certainly I am here as well as all three shareholders uh, if the board has any questions, uh, but no major anticipated changes to the business whatsoever. Uh, the name DBA will remain the same. There's no major structural changes to the store. Uh, so a, a fairly straightforward transfer of the location of business. Jay, any questions? Jay, you have any questions? No, I'm just going to miss Jill's smiling face. <laughs> I'm going to miss everything. Uh, I'm just curious what other stores that they uh, all or operate in the area. Yeah, um, so the, yeah, the closest one out in that area would be Southwick. Um, so they have a store in Southwick. They have a couple in Worcester in the Framingham area. Uh, but Hitesh Kumar will be the manager out there. Um, so the majority of their stores are in the Central Mass uh, portion of the state. But um, just a, a variety of uh, all alcohol package stores and a few with beer wine licenses. So any other questions or comments from the public? Anybody else there, Chris? Any comments, anything? No? I don't see anybody. Right. Well, at this time, I'll close the public portion of the meeting. All right. Jenner, Jay, do you see any reasons why? Um, this should not be approved. I see no reason. I don't see a reason that all the requirements remain the same. It's just a different owner. They're not requesting it different. All right. Well, at this time, I'll entertain a uh, motion to approve said transfer. I will make a motion to approve the transfer. Can I make a friendly amendment to that motion uh, that the, the fee of thousand dollars must prior to this transaction be approved. As amended. Okay. Y'all said that. Is there a second? I'll second the motion to transfer the liquor license. Did you hear the amendment part two, uh, 
said by Chris. Yeah, each of us get a thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think that was it. Yeah, I think you missed part of it. You're close, Jay. You're close. Okay. All right. So, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, I know you can't see everybody with three eyes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. We look forward to having you as a uh, a neighbor. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Jill. Bye. See you guys soon. <laughs> Okay, um, I just want to talk about a couple of other items before I get into the opening plan. Okay. Uh, I just want to let you know that uh, I was contacted by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, they were looking to see if we wanted to participate in a regional program called Domestic Violence Victim Safety Enhancement through Perpetrator and Victim Support Services. Uh, what this is, is COVID-19 has made domestic violence more dangerous as victims are asked to stay at home with abuse and Many victims are reluctant to leave home for fear of getting sick from traveling or staying in a shelter. Victims are also reluctant to call police or get a restraining order for fear their partner will get sick return home and infect the family. This project will reduce harm to victims by helping perpetrators make safer choices and by supporting victims. Where, the town of Ware, will be the lead town in this regional project. And other eligible towns are invited to join. Community block grant money, CV money, will be sought to fund this proposal, which will include the following three components. One, a helpline, a free confidential helpline will provide support to anyone at risk of being violent within the grant region. Trained and certified helpline workers will focus on de-escalation and risk reduction and on connecting people to local support services, including, but not limited to, intimate partner abuse education programs, IPAEPs, the helpline will also provide support and referrals for friends and family members seeking help in preventing, interrupting, mitigating, and stopping violence against their loved ones. Two, flexible support services for perpetrators. Support services will be offered to perpetrators who attend, agree to attend, or have graduated from IPAEP groups. These groups, currently offered in several towns throughout the Pioneer Valley, provide weekly education and support for 40 consecutive weeks, primarily for court ordered perpetrators. This project will add support in addition to weekly groups. IPAEP staff will be available to help perpetrators during normal work days, not just once a week during groups. Staff will help perpetrators work towards safety and will help them access other needed services that will enhance safety, i.e. substance abuse services or housing stabilization. And three, victim support services. Traditional community-based domestic violence advocacy services will be offered to the victims of perpetrators attending IP, AEP groups. In, an advocate will contact victims by phone to offer advocacy services and to work in partnership with IP, AEP staff to verify perpetrator reports of safety. The estimated budget is 190000 to be split between participating towns. And I signed on behalf of the town on May 26, 2020, due to the time frame that was required to participate in this program. 
How many towns as of now are participating? I don't know. I'll have to get that information from my Valley Planning Commission next. Okay. Um, I'm sure it was sent out to all the uh, commission member towns to see if they wanted to participate with who we the town, I think it's like, is he heard you right? They're going to split the cost of 190000 Which I can't imagine a lot of towns wouldn't get involved in it. Right. But we won't know our exact amount until all the towns, I assume there's a specific date they have to reply by. Uh, we, we, no, we haven't. Reply, I think, was by May 27th, I believe, Jay. That's why I hurried up and signed and, and joined up. The other towns had to apply by May 27th, too? Yes. Then we should be able to find out how many towns are actually in it now, then, right? Uh, how many had returned? Yes, they returned a uh, request. Yes, we should be. And that would give us uh, more accurate information what's going to cost us? Yes, right. No, what, what we would be entitled to, not what all costs us. Well, 100, 100 million dollars. Broken up over the all the commu uh, participating communities. That's what I mean, 190,000 is gonna be broken up with all the um, participating communities. Yes. So is that, that's a, is that the portion that they're giving to us? Yes. Okay, so we're not. Paying for it. We don't pay anything. Okay, all right. It's, I got you. Okay. it's community block grant funds. Okay. Coronavirus funds. Okay. Is block grant. All right. okay. Yeah, and I missed that part too, Jay. It's a grant. Yeah, yeah. I didn't hear so it. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Um uh, so is it the whole state? That's or just like a certain I'm sure it's being, valley. I'm, I'm sure it's being applied for across the state. I'm sure the, a lot of the larger communities can get the money direct home because we are small communities. Right. We have to go through the community development block grant funding mechanism. And it'll be anybody like us, where probably Hadley, maybe South Hadley, the smaller communities would be uh, signing up for this type of a program. Now, this is being managed by PVPC for us? Yes. Okay, that means. There can be a maximum of 43 communities, because that's all that PVPC represents. But I'm sure some of the larger communities are getting the money directly to them, Jay. Right, but this wouldn't... Like, like Springfield and Westfield and maybe Chicopee, the larger ones? Well, yeah, well, Chicopee belongs, and Springfield belong to the same region as we do for PVPC. Yes. Right, right. What Chris was saying, the, the the larger cities may qualify and have it on their own without being part of this grant. But it's good. It's good that uh, the money is available, um, definitely for a good cause. Now, what happens if our, we use more than our portion? They just bill us, or? I don't think you're only entitled to a certain dollar amount, and that's it. When it's done, it's done. Okay, I didn't know if we had to contribute after that total dollar amount was reached. There was nothing in any of the documents that I received that says we had to make any financial commitment to the program over and above whatever grant was received. Okay, I saw the three documents, and they were all basically the same. And then there was a second program that I was contacted by uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission regarding micro enterprise assistance funding. Um, we all know that there was a article or a report that the city of Springfield was handing out grants to their small businesses during this pandemic. Yep. Uh, we can't apply for those funds directly. We have to go through, again, the community development block grant process. And Pioneer Valley Planning Commission asked if we would be interested to participate. 
And basically what it is, the town of Granby, together with the city of East Hampton and the towns of Hadley, Hatfield, South Hampton, South Hadley, and West Hampton, with assistance from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, is working on a competitive grant application to support economic and community development efforts in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We included a, there is a link to a document on the town's website that brings you to a survey form and to be able to allow us to be able to apply for this. And basically the survey is used to collect information that shows the level of interest or need for micro enterprise assistance grant funds and to establish a wait list of potential local businesses that would be interested in grant funding. Submitting the information does not guarantee that the business or the city will receive grant funding. If grant funding is received by the town, grants of up to $10,000 will then be made available for eligible micro enterprise businesses. The eligibility requirements are determined by the Mass Department of Housing and Community Development and are posted at the website at easthamptonmass.gov. The grant information background is on May 15, 2020, the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development announced a competitive community development block grant program to support economic and community development efforts in response to the COVID-19 pandemic particularly for low moderate income residents. So as applications are due to the state by June 5th, the city of East Hampton is applying as the lead community in a regional application with Granby, Hadley, Hatfield, South Hadley, West Hampton, and South Hampton for micro enterprise assistance funding. And there, they ind indicate that there'll be a virtual public hearing on Zoom on Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020 at 4 p.m. to discuss and answer questions about this application proposal. And if people are interested, they could call the selections office to get the meeting ID, meeting password, and any telephone numbers that they need to call if they want to listen in. Basically, is that looking for the full name of the owners, the mailing address of the business, the full name of the business, the physical address, a telephone number, and an email number. The questions they have to ask is, what is your business in operation prior to January 1, 2019? How many employees, including yourself and any other owners, does your business have? And has your household business income decreased significantly over the last eight weeks due to COVID-19? What type of for-profit organization type is your business? Basically, it's a sole, is it a sole proprietorship, a partnership, a corporation, an LLC, none of the above or of? And the last question is, is your business classified as any of the following? Owned by persons under age 18, real estate rental sales, businesses that is a chain, a lobbyist, a liquor store, weapons, firearms dealer, cannabis related, or none of the above. And then they just ask if they have any comments about the proposed use of grant funds for micro enterprises. So this was a way we could get out to a lot of our local businesses so we could, you know, they could be on that, that uh, meeting. Yeah, we've been trying to get a, a list of all our local businesses yeah. uh, outside of the 202 quarter. We have that in the water main project, but uh, it's hard finding any yeah. other businesses that would be out there. Hmm. You know, it's not like we have an email list that we have available to. Yeah, and what, what we could do just to try to get the, the information out there, I think, I think would be good. Actually, we have all that information on file. If you ask Kathy Leonard for a copy of all the businesses that signed for the MVP grant, there was 48 of them, and their addresses and names are all in there. 
because we had to collect all those from the businesses to include it in the MVP grant application. But I'm sure there's more than 48 businesses in the town of Granby. Right, but I'm just saying we'll there's a okay, we'll start. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's all I'm saying because it's it's more information than we have just for the water pipe project is what I was trying to say. Could we get the business license applications from Kathy Kelly Regan? Only if they file there. Well, if they don't file them. Yeah. You try. Yeah, I mean, we can, uh, Jay, you mentioned the, the, the 40, yeah, I think you said, and you know, we talked to Kathy, whatever we can do, I think, just to try to get information out there, it's helpful. Obviously, we won't reach everybody because we don't know every business in Granny. Some people have businesses that they're out of home or, you know, what have you. They can be constructions or. Actually, if they're out of home, they're still supposed to file with Kathy Kelly Regan. I know I, I understand that, Jay, but I'm saying it's it's a short period of time. The meeting is uh, Wednesday at three o'clock, uh, four o'clock. So, you know, it might be tough for Kathy to get a lot of information together in a in a day. So, uh, is besides it, others, is it an email meeting? Yeah. Emails or something like that. We'll try our best to get as much information out to as many people as we possibly can as far as businesses. Is it being put out by MMA? No. Okay. This is, through, this is through the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Well, they usually tape those. I'm wondering if we can uh, get a hold of Catherine Rattay, and even if the people can't see the original meeting, they can watch the tape, just like they do us on YouTube. It's a good question. You can you'll find out. Something to explore. Yeah. It sounds like it's going to be what, about what the grant is about, and it sounds like a, a question and answer type uh, meeting as well. Yeah, the same as the webinars we do at MMA, which are also taped. I'm sure we can find out. And just so the board knows, is I am currently finalizing an application to the Commonwealth of Mass for the Federal Coronavirus Relief Fund uh, for the fiscal years FY20 and FY21. The town of Granby is entitled to $559,600. Uh, the first uh, one for 2020 is due by June 5th. I'm currently finalizing our numbers to put in a application for reimbursement for COVID-19 related expenditures. I assume, then, uh, I presume oh, gotcha. when you say finalizing the numbers, it includes all seven departments, which means the school too? The school, I believe, is going to have stuff for FY21, because she was talking about doing, uh, putting some computers and stuff together for potential remote learning, and I haven't gotten that information right now. So I could include that with the FY21 reimbursement if need be. Can we include all their PPE they purchased for FY20 but haven't used because they haven't been in session? All the what? Personal protection. Quit. All their PPE? Yeah. Yes. I don't think they've been doing much with PPE because, uh, you know, I went back and looked at invoices from March 10th forward. And I haven't seen much of PPE for the, for the school because they haven't been in session. Okay. I know they ordered it before the town did, but I know they did put a hold on the schools because, as you said, they weren't in session. But I know our school had ordered it before the town did. Right. So what, I, what I've been doing is I've been collecting all the invoices for the town, Jay. Mm -hmm. And I, I got all that information together. And then what I did is uh, I got a report from the fire analysts and the police departments regarding any uh, payroll expenditures or additional staff or coverage for people who want to be out with suspected inspections. Uh, and that's one put together to put, send into the state for this year. 
And I'm trying to get more information from the school because I need actual invoices in order for me to be able to uh, make a submission. Now, there's some background noise which is causing you to break up. I don't know where it's coming from. Kevin and uh, Al can shake their head yes if they're getting it too. Um, I'm actually hearing things pretty well right now. Uh, can I just add one thing? Sure. Just, just so you're aware, the uh, East Meadow School, um, or the schools in general, gave us a bunch of uh, PPE um, right at the beginning of the uh, coronavirus pandemic. Um, I don't know anything about the invoices for that, but um, I know that they had stocked up a bunch of stuff. Um, and because they weren't in school, they, um, Bill Littell, the East Meadow principal, said, well, you know, why don't we give it to the first responders? And so that's what they did. We, we split that with the fire department. So just there may be an invoice or main. I don't know anything about that because they just gave them to us, but we do have them. The only problem with that, Al, is I don't know when they would have been purchased. They could have been purchased way back in the beginning of the, of the school year. And I know a lot of the stuff had to do with everything since the, uh, uh, basically they were supposed to be for uh, expenses incurred on or after March 1, 2020, up to December 30th of 2020. Do you want me to check with their supplier as of 1 March, how much they've supplied the school? I guess you can, Jay. Well, why don't we reach out to the school superintendent and I have her research it. I agree. But I know well, where I, I send her an email because yeah, she's, not, she's not vocal, so. But, I mean, that's information you can contact their, their business manager and that's information they can pull up quick enough, I'm sure. Well, the business manager is, is, isn't in the office every day either. No, but, I mean, that's information they, that they have. I mean. Well, like I said, it's only things incurred on or after March 1st. Yeah. So if they had purchased a bunch back in February, whatever, it's ineligible. Right. So. Okay. Um, you want to talk about the reopening plan? Okay. Uh, first thing is, is uh, we were notified by the Board of Health that what they had talked about at our last meeting were the rules and regs for opening the parks. Yes. That had been sent forward to the Parks Oversight Committee. They had no comment. So therefore, what we are doing is having a bunch of those rules and regs printed. We're going to encase case them in uh, yeah. the plastic. And then we're going to mount them around the various parks. We will be opening the parks all the gates to the parks and leaving them open as of Thursday. Oh, good. So as of Thursday, residents will be able to use all of our parks. All the gates will be open with the rules and regs as indicated by the Board of Health to be followed. Okay, so that's all we can do. And if they choose to follow the rules, so be it. If they don't, then uh, they run the risk of potential fines or censure or whatever by the local enforcing agency, which is the local board of health or the police department who were sworn in as their agents for enforcement purposes. Well, that's good. I mean, there's been a lot of discussion and you know, we're using the parks, so hopefully uh, they use them and we have the the, the signs we posted, that's what you're, I guess, can and can't do. So hopefully people follow those. And, and if they don't, then it's up to someone else to enforce whether right. for them to do that. Yeah. However, please be advised, and everybody should know this, the pavilions remain closed for the Board of Health, and the playground equipment remain closed for the Board of Health. Okay. And so, that'll be that'll be clearly in the rules posted, right? Uh, that was one of the items I think they listed as part of the that we discussed at the last meeting. Yeah, I mean, they can put those signs up right in front of them. You know, the playground being closed and the pavilion being closed. Yeah, people have a tendency of ripping them down and just throwing them. Down. 
We will, that's a whole different problem. Yes, we will post what happens to the signs after we post. It is what it is. Okay. The second item is, is the uh, reopening of our various offices. We will be starting up transportation services for elderly to be brought to doctor's appointments, to the grocery store, or other type of transportation needs. Uh, what we have done is we bought some sanitizing cleaner that in between the rides we will spray down the vehicle. We are having masks. We are asking whoever uses the rides to please put a mask on. If they don't, we will have some masks available. Not a lot, but we will have some. And I am requiring the drivers to you wear gloves while they are in the vehicle and to wear a mask. Okay. As we're reopening these things, are we sending the proposed plans to the Board of Health ahead of time to make sure they concur? We haven't done on the on the on the, uh, on the transportation yet, but we can forward that to them. As think, for the building, yeah, I think we should forward everything to the board of health because they're the controlling authority. As for the opening of the buildings, um, we have to follow the rules and regs for any other building, which is we cannot exceed twenty five percent of our posted occupancy per our inspections. Uh, that means for the offices here, we can only have the, our total occupancy is 25. We have five employees up there. So that means we can bring in possibly up to two people at a time in here. Downstairs here, it's 133 is the occupancy limit. So at 133, a quarter of that is about 40, 45 feet at the most. Again, I'm going to, just like in many businesses that you see now, we're going to put a sign up that says masks are required to be in the building. All our employees have sneeze guards in front of their workstations. Basically, it's a piece of plastic. Mm -hmm with a slot to be able to hand stuff back and forth. All of our employees will be having sanitizing liquid for their hands. They will be supplied with gloves and masks that they are required to wear during all office hours. The problem we're gonna run into is up at the annex at 215 West State Street. Is the building inspector went up and looked he is saying the at 25 percent we cannot have more than nine people in there but we currently have five employees working up there so that would only allow up to four people to come in that one i believe what we should do is again post it for masks required and do by appointment only up there yeah a lot of places are doing that too by appointment only, so we definitely do that. Okay. Because of the, the, the layout of the, of the building and the and the occupancy load that is allowed for the building no, why I heard you say, Chris, you talked about uh, the employees have to wear gloves all day. Yes. So what's the purpose of that? Handing papers back and forth if they're taking the money in, if they're doing a day, that type of stuff. I want them wearing gloves, disposable gloves. I have boxes of gloves so that they have, they can change them when they go to the bathroom, but they have to put gloves on when they're, whenever they're dealing with the public. So the only, the only thing I, I guess, so, okay. So I'm more, we'd rather have a, a protocol that they're using the alcohol uh, to clean their hands or they're washing their hands because if someone puts on gloves and they it's sometimes it's more of a uh, they think they're fine and they keep them on all day they don't change them and they're touching everything you've you done nothing but spread germs everywhere that person had the gloves on is protected but everything that that person touched not so much yeah right so i'd have them 
I'd be more inclined to say uh, use the hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer. Also, you need to you know wash your hands as you know as much as possible, whatever when you're handling things. Well, you go to a lot of companies and they're using gloves and handles they money and things of that nature. You go to companies, you go to CVS, you go to any of these places, they're all wearing gloves. And I understand that, but when someone's wearing gloves and they start touching their computers or they're answering their phones, they've done nothing but and no we will still be doing our daily wipe down of services that we are still doing right now. Are the gloves of such a quality that you could wash them with soap and water or sanitizer where you had them on? They're the same gloves that are used by the ambulance department, Jay. I had them order them for us. They're just a latex glove. There's different quality latex. That's why I'm asking that question. Because some are whatever the ambulance department uses. And nobody's here. Because I have some real good quality gloves and I got some real bad quality gloves. But if they well, I would say they're quite as average blue gloves that they let well, most people wear. Right, but I'm saying if, if they're good quality gloves, after each transaction, they could just put a little sanitizer in the gloves and clean up their gloves and then that would resolve it in both. Uh, I understand that, but the CDC says one of the best uh, precautions that people have is their skin. That the coronavirus cannot penetrate your skin. So that's yeah. why I'm, I'm saying that. So right. if, if you look at that, uh, that's a concern I just have. Like, so when people wear gloves, it's it's sometimes it becomes a false security, and they start touching all these different things and stuff like that. That's just that's just my take on it from what I've seen over the years. So, but we can send it up to the Board of Health and uh, let them make the decision. So. I have a question. What about individuals that for some reason or another cannot wear a mask? They just have indicates like they do for any other place that uh, they have a medical condition that doesn't allow them to and they're not allowed, we can't force them to wear a mask at that. But they won't, they'll be allowed in to do whatever business they are. We're not going to say, I'm sorry. Yeah, but I just hope that they are honest with our employees Agreed. when they are allowed not to wear a mask because, you know, per the directive from you know, the state is if they have to read lips, then they don't have to wear a mask. And if they have a medical condition, they don't have to wear a mask. But we cannot ask them to prove that they have that medical condition. Okay, so with, with masks, our town employees, we're all going to be wearing the same mask. Or are they going to be able to wear what they feel? I am supplying the, the typical surgical style mask. Mm -hmm. If they want to bring their own in from home, they're more than welcome to do that. However, I do have to have masks available for my employees. No, and I, and I understand that, but I'd like to see that somehow, somewhere, I, I don't know how, that if someone brings a mask in from home, it's approved. That's it's a certain quality that it meets a certain standard. I don't think there's really any standard there out there any standard. for masks. That's the problem. They're saying something as simple as a t-shirt. Yeah, but this, this here is better than any t-shirt, napkin, or anything around. And, and I understand that. Agreed. But when you go out on the CDC website, they show you, make it out of a sock, make it out of a t-shirt, make it out of whatever. I know, but I'm talking about our employees. I want to make sure that we're being consistent in protecting our employees. That My way. answer is, as long as I am supplying surgical masks, then it should be that quality or better, as far as I'm concerned. Right, that, that, that's just where I'm, because I want to make sure that we're, uh, the employee's safe, but also the public that's coming in is safe too. And they're, and behind, the they're behind those sneeze guards too, yeah. when you're dealing with the public. So if they sneeze, it's going to stop their sneeze as well as something coming through from the other side. Yeah. And we have it at every, every uh, service spot. Kathy has two on her desk. We've got uh, three down here at the bottom of the council on aging. We've got one on the other. 
on the, the director's desk. We have one on the yeah. secretary's desk over there. We put one on every desk in every office. Yeah, I mean, all, so, a lot of places have them, all the Home Depots. Or, yeah, and that's, I mean, that's the biggest that. one that they're looking for. Yeah. The other one I have the idea to do is do a face shield, but nobody's going to want to wear a face shield yeah. all day long. I don't think there's a need to wear it all day long. No. Only with customers. You don't have you don't have people in every other minute. Well, I see people in grocery stores wearing face shields. Oh, some do, and some do they deal with the public. Because that, but that's how they, they feel more comfortable with the face yeah. shield than the mask. Right. But my issue is, as long as I'm supplying a face mask that meets whatever the standard is, then they should be wearing that on the back. Right. And I'm, I'm not I'm not uh, qualified to go look at a, at a mask and say. Hey, no, I know. I know. I just want to make sure that we're, it's that we're protecting the people that come in, the public, and, and, and the employees as well. And I feel like supplying the surgical mask, I know. I'm doing the best I can do. Because at some point, OSHA is going to come around and they're going to start looking at what people are doing and start right. issuing fines if you don't do that. So, are we going to develop a policy and protocol for that? I currently am having. Uh, the analyst department come around, show everybody how to properly put it on. Doc, Don and Doc, they've asked. Yes. Don and Doc gloves. Put in that uh, talk to them about uh, the proper sanitary, sanitizing of your hands. 20 seconds, not just rub it on real quick. Should be doing 20 seconds worth of uh, rubbing both front and back of the hands. You know, just that's all we can do is try and train. Right. But I think there should be a, uh, a protocol or a policy put out there so they know. So Kathy's upstairs in her office all day by herself, or you, are you going to have a mask on all day while you sit in your office by yourself? Oh, no, I don't. No, but that's funny. So that's, we, we need to actually have something in place so people are aware of what, what they can and can't do. So if it becomes a meeting. This, or the public comes in and you must have your mask on, you must have your gloves on. Because it's in your office all day. Anybody comes What's with that? a seat, you got to put a mask on. I think that's just the general policy. Anybody comes within six feet of you, they're going to break your so called space. Both parties require to have a mask. Unless it's husband and wife or something like that. You know? Yeah, but a lot of places are, they're not even, they're, they're even going outside at six feet and saying you have to have a mask on. They to go in like certain stores and stuff like that. So I'd rather, I'd rather have it hang that way. That the public has to have a mask on unless they have a, uh, a medical reason, as stated by the governor, not to have it on. But I think we just need to have something set so the employees know when they should be wearing them and when they're not supposed to be wearing them. I think it's just fair, fair, fair to them, you know. Okay. What are you proposing for a policy? I, I think anytime they're dealing with anybody in the public, they must have them on. Or they're, they're, if, if someone is in their own office and they're by themselves, I, I don't see a need for them to have uh, a mask on or wearing gloves. If someone from, from the public or someone else comes in, another employee, now they're having a conversation. Well, yes, they both should have at least both have masks out at that point. So we go right back to the beginning. If you get within six feet of somebody, both people put masks on. Yeah. Well, it, it, it comes down to being. I wasn't. I was more than six feet away, and then were they, weren't they, and stuff like that. So I just think. If someone's alone in their office, that's just the point I'm making that they don't need to have a mask on and gloves on if they're alone in their office by themselves. I don't think there's any reason for that. I mean, if somebody wants to wear a mask all day, that's up to them. But if they don't, they don't have a mask on and somebody comes within six feet of them, they're required to put one on. So any other person to person interaction. That's correct. Yeah. And yeah, but that would also be fellow employees. Well, yes. Yes. Employee to employee, employee to public, it don't matter. If it's not a relative that lives in the same household, you have to put a mask on if somebody comes within six feet of you. 
Al, were you wanting to say something? Uh, yeah, you guys, I put that question, was going to put that question a little bit uh, earlier. You kind of rolled into what my question was. Um, and I agree with um, all of you that there, we should have something in place. And we've been doing that, at least on the police side of the fire, of the uh, public safety complex. Um, you know, we're not wearing masks all day long. We're not wearing gloves all day long. And we're doing everything we can to socially distance ourselves. And, you know, right now the building's locked. So it's it's real simple for us to kind of keep distance from the public. Um, I would I would say it doesn't make sense to have people wearing masks and gloves all day long in the office setting, as long as they're doing their best to socially distance. Um, I think you could be creating, you know, other health issues that are avoidable if people can stay away from each other. Um, I propose something or actually not propose something. I we, we drafted something police department in anticipation of the reopening that just kind of clarifies what the expectations are in terms of when they deal with each other or when they deal with someone in the public um, when they can't be six feet apart or when somebody's in the building um, and it really kind of goes along the lines of what the board's talking about now um, it's you know it's kind of impractical to have people wearing masks and gloves all day long if they're not in contact with people I agree. Like I say, somebody comes up within six feet of me, I'll put a mask on. Otherwise, I'll leave my wife out of it. But other than that, if anybody comes within six feet, you got to put a mask on. That's it for me at this point. Uh, I guess we have left is uh, some action items. Okay, yeah, Jeremy. Yeah, my hear you. Okay. When we do so, the water. Uh, yeah, we have the water main proposed project. Um, yeah. I know we had uh, that meeting uh, last week. Yeah, on the meeting last week. There's a couple things that self hadly changed, and just so we're clear, I'll repeat it. Originally, they said 100% of our residents had to have water signed up. And at the meeting, they said, no, that's not true, but there must be a, um, what do you, what's that word with an S? Spigot or whatever you call it, spike. Or... Service. They can't take out of service. Yeah. Well, the thing with it is, every parcel must have an access to the water, a spike or whatever you they call. It. But that's like all the stuff that they call it a service stuff. Okay, stuff. Every parcel has to have a stuff, and that is already on our drawings. Every parcel has a stuff, so we meet that requirement. The requirement of uh, all residents and businesses are required to sign up for water. They backed off and only 50% has to sign up to ensure the water quality in the pipe is sufficient. Does everybody agree with me on that, on what they said? Yeah, it's 50 to 60%, yes. Okay, I looked at the uh, things and between the South Hadley line and 54 West State Street, there's 27 parcels. So I rounded it off to 28. So that means we have to have 14 people or 14 individuals sign up for the service to meet their requirement. Okay, the other part was they backed off from the destruction of the wells. You cannot have dual water source in the same building. But if you do have an existing well, you have to disconnect it uh, both electrically and with the water hose, <coughs> excuse me, from the foundation, fill it up with concrete, have them inspect it and then backfill it. We all agree on that too? 
Well, I thought Jeff Sears said that you let the Water Commission decide that because there's some new members. I thought he was basing something off before, but he, I know one of the commissioners had said something different. Um, you're right. What you're saying. The three water commissioners at our meeting, uh, I'm saying what they agreed to. I'm not saying what the one November 2019 letter says. There have been changes since they issued that letter, but we haven't received a new letter yet, to my knowledge. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, mean, I, know, I, know, I remember one water commissioner saying that he was open to that and didn't see, just didn't see an issue with, with uh, you know, for someone who wanted to use that for yeah. irrigation or something like that. Yeah, and but that's so that something we can discuss. Yeah, that was either Jerry or Jack, I forget his name. But Bill also agreed with that. He was the former chairman. He's the one that says you're never going to get water any cheaper than you're going to get it now. He was the guy in the far right. Yep. So there you got two out of three. You got a quorum right there. We just don't have it writing yet. Well, I think that's it. So they said they, it, that has to be changed, I, I believe, too, if they're going to do something like that. Right. So we need, to get a, we need to get an updated letter from them with their changes. And um, we're going to ask Mr. Martin to do that, to update their 1 November 2019 memo. Well, we'll ask them to give us a new, a new memo right. that states that. Right. Do, do, do you what? Do you want Mr. Martin to send him the email? You want me to send him the email? You? No, well, we can have, we'll have uh, Chris do that. Send it out yeah. to Jeff Sear right. and ask for updated, uh, based on a, our discussion that we have with them, on an right. updated version of what they want. Exactly. And I'm just verbally saying what they agreed to at the meeting, and then I'm making uh, sure that I am correct by saying, uh, am I correct? So we're going to get 14 people or, or businesses or whatever you want to call them to sign up a service agreement to meet their water quality requirements for the 28 parcels, 14 or more, put it to you that way. Minimum right. And I remember Right. I remember when we just we talked about the the Stony Brook condos too. That he he, he said you know did take that complex into consideration. Would we would have to be uh, we would have to go fifty percent because that's such a a big complex compared to all the other water uses that would be. And I remember Jeff saying they'd like to have something further down the line as well, not not just there. So I think that's right. something to consider too. Right, but also the Grammy Motel would fall on the same thing. Could get the, they got rooms oh, and right. not apartments or whatever you want to call it. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So with that being said, uh, we Kathy already has the envelopes prepared for all of the uh, um, parcels. But we just got to put something in the envelope to mail out to the people. Now, I sent you a thing today about the Small Business Author uh, Administration because everybody was concerned on businesses, on uh, the cost of this. Right. As you, as you can see, um, if you remember about a couple of months ago, I went to Waitley to a sewage and water uh, w meeting they had up there. And the guidance they had as far as getting water and stuff remains the same. They can get a loan for up to 30 years at 3.75%. So as we talked about at the water commission meeting, the average person is looking at $5,000 to connect. We agree on that. More if you're longer, less if you're shorter. 
but the average he gave us was five thousand dollars and that right included, and that included their two thousand dollar service fee so all the businesses because i did go to them eat to each before the COVID 19 to get those mvp letters signed because i went personally everybody was in favor of them and i don't see any business saying no to five thousand dollars particularly if we include this u.s small business administrative COVID 19 attachment in their thing that tells them if they want to not only for their losses due to COVID 19 they can include the water project as part of it and they can get a loan up to 30 years for 3.75 percent because that's an uh chris talked before was a grant uh, getting them some money well this is a loan this is not a grant so i think it's another way we can help our businesses by because i gave them the link on that attachment too so they could go right to it so i think we should yeah, yeah. I would agree with that, Jay. I think if, if it's a benefit where someone can get uh, a loan or something like that and they wish to do it, absolutely. Right. Because based on my experience at Camp, I uh, mean, at uh, Cape Hatteras, Myrtle Beach, uh, New Orleans, and the rest, when the federal government comes out, which they haven't come out yet, for municipalities and for stuff like that, for the because they're doing the small businesses now. Everybody comes out better than they were before. Example, I was talking to some people down at Cape Hatteras and said, why do you keep building these houses on this island? Every time a hurricane comes through, it gets knocked down. The guy said, it's easy. The first one I built was for $100,000. When it got knocked down with the financial assistance, the next one I built was 250000 when that one got knocked down, the next one I built was for 500,000. Because they're coming out with all this low interest money and in, um, assistance. So with the COVID-19, eventually we're gonna get this kind of assistance. So I, I don't see where we have a problem with it. The, I did talk to Keith Lincoln to get some further clarifications. Right now, what they're looking at, they want the town of Granby to put their water pipeline in this fall, and the state will do their work starting next spring. Originally, they said we could have in kind funds of $360,000 for that section. They cannot determine on how much in kind funds we're going to get until they get their bid done and get theirs back but if we're going to be doing work before they're there then the police details and stuff like that we would have to pay for but when they come back they're going to do all the asphalt and everything like that they're not going to require us to put 202 back to the original standard we put a temporary patch on it to get it over the winter time so with that being said, if we were to subtract the $360,000 from what we were looking at doing, or we could just add it to the 1.2 million, we're probably looking at a maximum of 1.5 million minus whatever we get for in-kind funds. So we'd have to go back to the people and tell them that they want us to continue based upon the rebidding process, the separation between Mass DOT and ourselves, we're gonna have to have a maximum of 1.5 million to continue. If we get in-kind funds, then that number will be reduced. And again, we don't have anything in writing and they're not gonna put anything in writing until all the bids are in. And this is how it's gonna go for us. Uh, we would go out for bid in July. We would have our bid review the first or second week of August. We would execute the contract in mid-August. Then we would have our mobilization phase of getting everything started and like that for the last two weeks of August. 
we would actually begin construction the beginning of September. The substantial completion would be done by November the 6th and final completion of our water main project would be done December the 6th. So I got that from him and I got it from him because we didn't have that before. So that, that's where we stand right now. Any what questions? do we have left at it? I wonder what we have left at that 1.2 million. We've used some of it already. I think we used 200 and something thousand, but Mr. Martin can give you a more accurate number. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's what I'm curious what, what we have left, because now that you know that can become more. Because you're not you're not Jay, you weren't including the money we've already spent. Or are you in that 1.5 million? Yes, I was including that. Okay. All right. Because I was going off the bids from the last time. Because see, the drawings are all done. The only thing we have to add to it this time is we have to add another bid. The documentation to put it out for bid. There's no more drawings to do. You've already paid for them. So it possibly could have got well, an additional 300,000. It could be, a, I'm going to say, maximum of 360,000 because that's what we were promised in in kind funds. I don't want to, I ra I'd rather go a little bit higher on the estimate and then go to the yeah. people a second time and ask for money. I'd rather say we came in under budget. So that's why I'm saying 360,000. Well, that's something we have to we need to put more money towards it. It's got to go back to the town for a vote on it. Yeah, and we're scheduled for town meeting, what, for 8 June? That's still on schedule or? No, no. No. Okay, when are we? Yeah. Part, of the Part of the problem is, Jay, is the finance committee hasn't been meeting on any of the budget stuff. And I believe we are looking at a June 10th joint meeting between the finance committee, the select board, and the school committee. Yeah, I did. And so. at that point in time, I, I believe you'll determine what the, the town is willing to fund the school at. And the other issue is, is that uh, we still don't have any answers on uh, potential cut in state aid for FY21. That's oh, the I biggest. Agree. I agree with you. There's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of unknowns. So right, right now, I had a conversation with the moderator today. And the issue is, is she said that if we had continued with the June 8th, she was going to postpone it at least 30 days to July. I think we should probably make a tentative date of July 20th, which is the third Monday in July, get our warrant together, get things done, and force the finance committee to at least come together with some sort of a budget or approved budget to be presented to the town meeting. I don't that's think that's a requirement to submit a 112 budget to uh, DOR so that we have uh, spending authority as of July 1. Anyways. I don't disagree with that at all. But for us to maintain this schedule because of that damn five year rule, which is the, the thing that's really kicking us in the teeth, is we have to go forward with the RFP process now before we can ask the people for additional funds. That's the problem. The bid has to go in in July, which is next month. If you lose the five year rule, you might as well just wipe it off because we, there's nobody that can afford to do work to a road that's in a five year rule. Because then you got to pay the original contract to come back and do whatever work then you're going to pay mass DOT to come back and inspect the original contract. So myself, I'm still in favor of going out for the bid because by timeline, we really don't have much choice.
Well, going off for the bid, that doesn't affect us at all, right? Well, right now they wanted $25,000 to do the new bid they gave to Rocher. Then uh, Mr. Martin got another clarification. They wanted another $7,500. And then I don't know what the 25000 was for. But those are the ones I've seen. Another, another 25000 for Clark and Works. Is that part of the bid process or something else? No, that's for us to have someone on site to make sure they're putting the pipe in according to regulation or according to the specifications. Right, but that's not part of the bid process. Money we got to spend to no, put that up. That's the cost we will incur through the uh, engineer to have them on site to make to monitor what the construction company is doing. Right, oh, but I'm saying though, it doesn't cost us anything to go out to bid again, right? For that RFP. Well, you better make sure that you have in your bid documents that the bid has to be held for X number of days. Normally, they're only good for 30 to 60 days. And if we're going to go a little bit longer than that, we better make sure that we have it in there. They're good for 90 days or 120 days. I mean, which, which may make the bids come in higher because prices are starting to go back up again as businesses start opening up. Right. Because you're starting to see the price of gas start to go back up. You're starting to see all that stuff and a lot of the stuff on uh, that type of work is oil-based, petroleum-based products. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's something we can, if we're going to put it out, we're going to put it out. That's something we got to put in there, something we got to put in there and see what we get. Yeah, because we all know at the end of this pandemic, everybody's going to try and make every penny they can back for what they lost we all knew the prices were going up on everything but are we are we going forward with the bid process for the bidding in july are we all set with that i don't see why i wouldn't move forward with the bidding process well, so I just want to make sure that there's a right? safe sheet of music. What's that, Shay? I just want to make sure we are all understand what we're doing. We're on the same sheet of music. We're going to go forward with the bid and see how much it's actually going to cost. Right. Well, as Mr. Martin said, too, we got to make sure everything in the bid is correct and the time frame is, is correct, too. So, you know, the bid doesn't expire. And, 60 days, you know, look at that 120 day window, then that's what we need to look at. But that's what we need we'll, to we'll rely correct. on. We need to rely on Mr. Martin and Keith Lincoln, the architect doing the design. They need to work close together. So if one needs a document, the other one gets it to them ASAP. So we don't have something fall in the cracks. Right, so Keith, Keith Lincoln's gonna put it all together and Chris is just gonna put out the bid. He's gonna supply yep. all the information and all the all the specs. Yep. But I just want to put everything on the table so everybody understands what we're doing. That's all. And what the schedule he gave me is what I gave you when I talked to him. So you know, time frame if we get it done. I don't know if we get it done quick enough, but we may be able to have it for the town meeting. But that might be kind of tight. You know, it's if we, if we do it, it's going to cost. But it's going to be kind tight. Of tight to do it. It's going to uh, be tight, particularly if the bid is higher than the 1.2 million. It's going to be tight to ask the people for another two or three hundred thousand dollars. I I can't see the bid coming in any lower than the other bid seen it before. I I can't either. Be honest with you. Everybody wants to make as much money as they can. Well, so, I mean, we can, uh, you know, Chris will be on it and they'll connect with Keith Lincoln and I mean, with the understanding that they have a lot of other things on their plate as well. So. Right. Well, so the bid will still go through as we all discussed, but we should keep in the back of the mind that I got a funny feeling because of that 360,000 in-kind funds, we may have to ask the people to approve us to borrow that extra three hundred and sixty thousand dollars 
and then get in-kind funds in the spring back when the um, the state actually does the paving and all that stuff, because we're not going to end up doing that. But again, we need all that in writing, just like we need all the stuff from South Hadley in writing. Yeah, it's a tough time to come up with extra three hundred sixty thousand dollars, but it's for the future. So things we got to look at then. It, it's Granby's future if they're going to go up there. I mean. Look at the amount of money we need in revenue now that we don't have. And I did some calculations. You know, CVS gives us like $30,000 a year just in property taxes. I didn't realize it was that much. Yeah, 30000 Based on their assessed value and multiply it by um, $19.77 per 100000 It's based on the value of the building, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we get buildings like that going in there. It won't be long before we can pay this loan off. But again, to be honest I don't know how many front, buildings are going to stretch, though. To be honest and upfront, they showed me that uh, the, the, uh, the people that owns the land that's not developed, they showed me what they had planned to do based if the water would come in but nobody's going to guarantee anything now because they don't know when this pandemic is going to end some people no, I, I, think, I think it's safe to say a lot of people's financials are different today yes. than they were a year ago yes that's all i'm saying and they're saying this pandemic could last one or two years if they don't come out with a vaccine and that's the only way it's going to protect all of us So that's the right. water project. Any more questions on that? I don't have any. Jeff? No. No. Okay, so we're going to go ahead with the bid, see what the final cost is, and then be prepared to possibly put an article in there to ask the people for more money based upon the COVID-19 and the separation of us in Mass DOT. And then the people say yes or no. That was my understanding the last time we discussed this and right yeah. I'm just repeating everything just like I did at the town meeting and the people voted it in twice. Even when I gave them the change in conditions from South Adley, they still voted they wanted it. So basically we'll go back for the third time and say guess what we had a few more changes called COVID-19 and separation of vast DOT and yeah. Granby, and we might need a couple hundred thousand dollars more. Let's we'll see what they say. Well, uh, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's our town, and that's where, that's where it comes into voting, and uh, we'll see what they say. But yep. there's a possibility going back and asking for more money, too, and it's, uh, it's a difficult it's, time. It's, it's going to be up to them. But all we can yeah. do is the best we can do with our job is give them the information truthfully and then they'll make their decision um we need to make a decision on this new library ev charger remember we were going to cost us forty seven hundred dollars the state was going to pay twelve thousand five hundred you asked me to go back and ask mass dep if we could get an extension right uh it, we don't how do we justify an extension? I don't know. That's what their answer was. Why do you need an extension? For what? COVID nineteen. Wow, uh, I don't think yeah. that'll I don't think that'll cut it. The only difference between the current bids that we have now would be the labor because Chris Martin will tell you we have to pay prevailing rates. Okay. Prevailing, these original estimates were March of 2019 for labor. I don't know how much the prevailing rates have changed since then. You got any idea, Chris? No, it all depends on whatever the unions have negotiated up there. Right. See, that would, that's the only difference on the installation cost. The, 
manufacturer of all the hardware says we can have it. They've extended the quote out to meet our August time frame. So they're not going to charge us a penny more for the hardware. Right. So we're looking at $4,700 and possible a little bit more, a little bit less, depending what the prevailing rates are any differently. And the state gives us $12,500. Now we could save some money because that $4,700 was to outsource the backhoe but if we wanted to have our own highway department dig the little trench, then we don't have to pay for that. But I don't know how much work Dave has on his plate with or without the chapter 90 money. If he doesn't get chapter 90 money, he will probably have time to do it. If he gets all his chapter 90 money, he may not. No, that's a question for Dave. Yeah, oh, can't make that decision for him. No, do nobody. We, do we think this charge? Is this? Do you think this charge is getting a lot of use at the library? It it the uh, Mr. Martin can give you more details on the amount of usage at the school because he gets the reports. Well, that's my question. How much is it? How much use is happening at the school? Good question. And then, they, you know, because I don't want to, if, if the school is not getting much use, I hate to spend, I don't say $4,000, still $4,000 just to have it there. And, and we're getting it, it's not getting much use in uh, at the school. Well, when Mr. Martin showed me the report, we were surprised on how much they were getting used, actually. I, I haven't looked at the reports in a few months. I don't know if Mr. Martin has. So you're saying it's getting used a lot? It was using a lot more than we expected, that's for sure, at the school. And we had ran into a problem where people were parking in those spots with a non-electric vehicle. And right. we went and uh, Bass DOP, DEP, came by and saw it and sent us an email that says you have to get part of your contract is to post and enforce non-parking in the non-EVs cannot park in those charging spots. Yeah, I remember all that. Yeah, and we went to Al and he said, you can't do anything until you do a bylaw change. Right, Al? No, we know. Yep, that's right. So that's all I can tell you is what the truth is. Thanks, Jay. I don't know. Well, I guess we just look at what the usage at the school is and it warrants it and maybe look at put one there. But well, you you get one you get two stations, one post with two stations, a dual station. For forty five hundred bucks? Yep. Dual station, forty five hundred or forty seven hundred. It's two, not just one. Yeah. One post with a dual station. It's like um, at the police department. It's like what's outside the COA is a better example. It's a dual station outside the COA. How, how much do you want the COA get used? I don't know. I don't see the reports on that because that's workplace. It's not. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I have seen a you know, vehicle there in several hours. Well, again, that's workplace. Only. Our town vehicles can be used. Oh. So the only municipal vehicles. Yeah, and that's like at the uh, safety complex. Only municipal vehicles and or town employees with EVs can use it. If you own an EV well, as a town employee, that. you can use it at no cost to you. It doesn't have a credit card module. How much does that cost? I don't know. I have to look at what the upgrade would be. It's called Square. No, a little bit more than that. Uh, Square. A little bit more than that. Well, well I'm, just, I'm, I'm just curious because I mean, we have one out here that's never been used. But a program that we got it from is for municipal use only. 
wasn't for public use. There must, there must be a time frame on that, though. No, I know it. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. the time frame. The time frame on those, they, we had to keep them in operation for three years, if I remember what the contract said. And how long have they been in? So close. The one at the COA is probably coming up close to three years. The one at the safety complex, oh, what, eight, nine months, Al? I, I'd be curious to see that one out here. I'm guessing eight or nine months at the safety complex. No, that was closed out probably uh, a couple months back, Chad. That okay. was like March or April. What do you think? We're coming up on 18 months at the school? Because they were yeah, done? Probably, probably 18 months there. Yeah. Was it done right after the school opened? It was done no, before the school. school. Yeah. So we've had two full school years. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm curious if we can find out how much it was used. Maybe not. Maybe well, now. Chris, Chris can has the report. Chris can access the reports. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm talking, looking at when I'm saying it. But when we looked at them originally from the school, we were surprised on how many people were using them and for how long. Yeah, I, I just want to see if it if it warrants having one. Put at the library, or and at Ask Chris too. That's why I wonder how long the one here has been here at COA. That that is there something saying that we can't put a a credit card uh, tap into it? I think after three years we can put a public credit card module on it and take the RFID off it. Well, that's not that's wondering. something to look into, especially if, if that costs 500 bucks and much better. And it's here already. It's not being used. And people aren't in see how much are being used, but again, it's it, it would since it's a workplace, it would be a DEP question. I can I can ask and use that as an example. I can ask her if we can convert the workplace at the COA to public usage, I'll get a yes or a no. That'd be a great idea. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious just to find out what the answer would be. Okay. I'll, I'll it'd be easier. Because honestly, I think we should put in all public access and not workplace for the simple reason on public workplace, we're limited to RFID cards. Well, public access, we can use credit cards. Well, the town has credit cards, and if they want to issue a credit card to a particular vehicle or something to go charge it, they can do it. Versus an yeah. RFID card is just no payment. Things to look into. Right, we can, we can follow up on that. That day be great, and then we'll get that information. And we can we can go from there. Okay, but are we going to do it? When are we, if we're going to meet that August seventeenth date, we're going to start ordering that equipment to get it in on time. It's got to be in by August seventh. Got to be completed by August the seventeenth. That's the date on our contract, unless we get an extension. And they want to know why, what justification do you have for an extension? Original well, companies, companies are installing those right now, would be my question as well. Is that companies that are, that are not, this aren't working or weren't working because of COVID-19? No, those, are, those companies, according to the governor, are considered essential because he's going to be number one in solar, number one in all this. They're still putting up solar panels everywhere. <clears throat> it's all considered essential work. And they are still installing EV chargers down at MGM. And uh, PVPC is waiting for theirs to be installed. Why are they waiting? Because PVPC doesn't own the building and they, Springfield, the town of Springfield or city of Springfield owns it. 
and they have to do the paperwork. So PVPC is walking the paperwork over to the city of Springfield, say, please sign this so we can get this. It's one of those deals down there. And they don't even have to pay for it. It's free because they got enough um, low income people down there. So they don't have to pay like we do. It's a matter of getting somebody to do the work. Do we have anybody to do the work is what I'm asking. So if we say, okay, yes, let's do it. I mean, we can't find a company that can do it before August 17th. But we do have a company that can do it by then. Well, we do already. Yeah. JRS Electric. But the Great. only thing that we have to do is I'll call Ron and we can, I can get two quotes for you. The original quote we have, plus I can get another quote if we want to have the highway department dig the trench. But then we're going to have to go back to Chris Martin and see if there's any difference between the, um, what are those rates again? Prevailing wage rates. Thanks, Chris. Prevailing rates from uh, uh, March of 2019 to date. That would be the only change. Because they love working prevailing rates. They make more money at prevailing rates than they do regular jobs. Yes. But I don't know what, like Chris says, I don't know what the union has negotiated for right now compared to March of 2019. Well, I, I, I don't see an issue with just following up with them to see what the cost would be right now and both ways. That way, moving forward, then you can follow up on the other question as far as uh, the time yeah, frame. I, I already followed up with the equipment, but we're going to have to give them a minimum of 30 days, if not 45 days, to build the hardware to get it to us. And that's putting us real close into that August date. August the 17th. If I can get an... Uh, invoice or I from the uh, manufacturer of the EV and if it says they they cannot uh, supply them to us by hypothetically September the 1st now that would be good justification to send mass DEP it says we're waiting on them because COVID-19 right. held up the uh, manufacturer of them but for us just to say COVID-19 they're going to say COVID-19 what we don't have right. the answer to what. No, I, I hear you, Jay, and that's, that, and that's right too. That the, some of these companies that may not be uh, producing some of the things, even though other companies are installing them, some may not be uh, manufacturing. So, right. so if we have an answer to you by the, our next meeting, we're at our next meeting, which is uh, the fifteenth of June. Is that enough time to move forward? With it? Myself for forty seven hundred bucks. I just say let's do it and get rid of it. That's my opinion. I prefer I think to have a little bit more information. Okay, well if that's what you want. The only difference in the information is going to be one of two things. Do we want to have our highway department dig the trench, which will cost us less than installation? And what's the difference in the prevailing rates? That's the only difference. The hardware costs are the same. So they've already oh, the other, the other, and the other question as far as the time frame for the one here at the COA. So if that's up and if they're saying three years, you can now use your credit card for it. That's something to look at too. That's definitely something to look at. Yeah, but that would be a separate thing because uh, I, I don't see where they make the difference. We can change it over. To, well, that's uh, my question. If we can change it over, does the town need another one? Uh, and I don't understand, Jay, it's, it's 4500 bucks, not a lot of money, and I got that. But I'm just looking at the need for it. If we can have one here at the COA, and it costs us $500 to turn it over to the other type of uh, accounting system, then is, is there a need for another one in town? Well, that, the reality is, I think, money. I think you'd get more usage at the public library than you would the COA. Because I don't see many seniors going out and buying electric vehicles. To be perfectly honest, with you. I do see people with electric vehicles can stop and have their vehicle charged where they go in and read a book or use the computer. Uh, 
So public access. Well, how much use is the library we're getting as well? So that's something to look at. But it, it, going back to my original question, Jay, uh, by June 15th, if you came back and had everything, is that enough time to move forward? I will ask the electricians and I will send a email out tonight to the manufacturer as requesting a delivery date. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Okay. Um, I, our other action items, I don't think we have anything else to discuss right now, do we? Everything else is open up in the air. Right. Yeah. All right, Chris, did you have anything else? Anything? No. Kathy, you? No. Jen? Nope. No. Jay, one last time? No, I'm ready for a drink. I agree. Yeah, but my right, drink is different than yours. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I will make the motion to adjourn. I'll is there second. a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye.